Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm going to do a 3D printing video today that's ham radio related. I'm going to make a custom center uh, dipole, uh, center for a dipole. It'll be the uh, center support insulator where the wires come in. And it's going to support a BNC connector. And I'm going to introduce enough space where I can put a one-to-one -one common mode choke right there on the center insulator. I wound this one on a T80 core, so I'm going to include enough space where this can sit on the insulator between the BNC panel mount connector and the connection points for the antenna wire. And then finally, to test it out, I'm going to print one out and I'm going to make a simple 20 meter dipole, string it up here in, <laughs> inside the house because it's 34 degrees and raining outside, and uh, use the mini VNA to uh, tune the dipole. And then uh, we'll do a couple of whisper uh, test transmissions and uh, see how far out it gets uh, at half a watt in the house. So that's today's project. Let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is hop into Tinkercad and begin designing the center. Now I've already got it pretty much in my head. I don't sketch things out um, on paper. I'm a very visual person. I, uh, I can think visually in 3D, so I'll, I'll rattle up designs in my head and rotate them around and think about them and and kind of figure out how I want it to look. Uh, so first off, um, it's going to be about, I'm going to make it four millimeters thick because I want some strength to it. So this will be the center column. Now I got to think about this. Um, I'm going to have the panel mount BNC. Uh, so the width at least of the center allow for room for a nut and a washer. I guess I'm going to want that to be 25 millimeters. So we'll go and make this 25 millimeters wide. And how tall does it have to be? Well, let's see. I'm going to have the connector at the bottom. I'm going to have a strain relief for the coax. So that's at least, oh, 45 millimeters up to the connector. I'm measuring, I've got a little template here with a panel mount BNC and I'm, I'm measuring with the calipers just to make sure I get the dimensions right. Um, so that's going to be 45. Yeah, I need enough space to accommodate the connector and crimp the coax. So up to the base of the connector I'm going to need, uh, uh, oh, Gosh, 50 millimeters, I guess. And then from the connector up, I need to accommodate the one-to-one. -one. So, and uh, top to allow for, let's see, this could be about there. Uh, so I'm going to need another, uh, uh, another 60. So about 110 millimeters tall. Okay. Now, the BNC panel mount, it's gonna be 50 millimeters up from the base. So I'm gonna bring in another box. And I'm gonna make it the same width. And how deep do I need that box to be? Oh, about uh, 30. All right. And that has to be 50 millimeters up. Thirty plus twenty 
about there. And I need to raise it four millimeters off the platform. Okay, now this has to be special. Control D to duplicate. And I'm going to have uh, two millimeters sides. So 25 minus 4 is 21. And I'm going to need um, three millimeters up there. So 30 minus 3 is 27. And I need to raise it up no I don't how do I want to do this Here I'm going to uh, cut a 45 degree angle into that shell for the BNC mount to give you space to get your thumbs in there and screw in the uh, BNC connector. I have to uh, figure out the size of this shape, align it, and then uh, cut it out as a whole. Okay, that looks good. Now I've just got to line it up, align it with the other piece, and then group them together. Now here I'm importing a hole that I've already defined for the BNC panel mounts. I call them virtual punches. I've made a whole set of holes for different types of connectors like SO239s and uh, um, various. Saving those as a, as a virtual toolbox of sorts, I can import them when I'm designing to uh, quickly make a hole for a certain type of connector I need.
Going to add a strain relief at the base of this for the coax that I can put a zip tie through. So I need to figure out how big of a hole I need to make. Four millimeters. Okay, now the top. Let's add some more strength to it.
Okay, this is looking pretty good. Only thing left to do is make holes for the antenna wires and the center support. Okay, I think that'll do it. There is our dipole center. I should have enough space here in the middle for that common mode choke. A hole here for hanging it from something if you wanted to. These are the two holes for the antenna wires. BNC panel mount goes in here. And then this is uh, for a strain relief. So you could, while you're in the field, after you hook up your coax, you could put a zip tie through there to take the weight of the coax off of the BNC connector. So I think, I think this looks good. I think we'll uh, print this out, test fit, a few, test fit a few parts, and see how it goes. So um, yeah, as you can see, I knocked that up in Tinkercad pretty quick. Uh, it's pretty easy to, to just throw together a quick, simple part in Tinkercad. I'm beginning to learn FreeCAD a little bit because there's some things that, that, are, that are just uh, not possible in Tinkercad. It's just too difficult to do things like chamfers and fillets, and beveled edges. Um, and being able to revolve things from a sketch is interesting too. There's a lot of things you can do in a real CAD program that you just can't do in Tinkercad. But I'm also experimenting with knocking up the basic shape in Tinkercad and then importing the resulting file into something like Blender where you can do mesh work to refine it and uh, clean it up. But, you know, just for a basic part, I think this will probably work. All right, so I'm going to print this guy. 110 millimeters. Yep, yeah, my bed is 120 on the Monoprice Select Mini, so I think that this will fit just fine. All right, so uh, I'll export this, print it, and then uh, we'll assemble the... Uh, antenna and see how it performs. Okay, there we go. From the computer screen to reality. And as you can see, that BNC sits in there nice. Now all we have to do is just put everything together. So I've got my one-to-one -one common mode choke, which I'm going to solder in right there. And then uh, Got my two links of wire prepared for the dipole. These are each uh, 16 foot 6 inches, a little bit long, so that we can trim it down as we go. And the plan is, I will take the wire end through this hole like so. And uh, let's see here, I want about that much. I think I'm going to want to do this like this. Bring this around and take it around the wire. And that should provide my strain relief. And then I'll just attach this end to the common mode choke. So we'll do that on each end here. And we'll get the choke in here and hook everything up, solder it all together. And then we'll be ready to take it upstairs and try it out. So let's get that done.
There we go. There is our 20 meter dipole. All I've got to do now is take it upstairs and hang it up and tune it. And then we'll do some whisper broadcasts and we'll see how it does on the air. All right. And my audio recorder stopped halfway through, so I'm pretty sure the last half of this audio is not so great. Sorry about that. Sorry about the handheld camera action. But I've got the antenna hanging up here in the house just for testing and playing around with. It's a little too cold outside. It's rainy, nasty day. So anyway, I've got it hanging up here on the ceiling. And one end runs off to the... Uh, window frame over there to the curtains and the other end runs off past the lights out into the kitchen over in that direction so like I said just for testing and uh, you might notice that the uh, wires have changed on the one-to-one -one. I uh, rewound it with some wire that had thinner insulation the uh, other wire was just too crowded on there and I couldn't maintain a symmetry and uh, it worked okay, but I just didn't like it. It was it was just crammed in there. It looked nasty and messy. So I took some doorbell wire and I rewound it um, with uh, with that. It's still uh, 18 gauge. It's just got thinner insulation, so it made for a nicer, neater look. And I've got it hooked up to the little Yezu FT817, which I was just doing some whisper transmitting on. Let's take a look at the results. Well, before I did my whisper testing, actually, I uh, did hook up the Mini VNA and uh, tuned the antenna, trimmed it down. I started out with about 16 foot, 6 inches, 16 and a half feet. Um, and I had to trim off oh, about 2, 2 and a half or so to get it down uh, the SWR to be in the center of the uh, 20 meter band. And uh, not ideal conditions, obviously, being inside the house and hanging up um, the where, where it was, I had metal near it, the refrigerator out in the kitchen, the, the overhead light up here was right next to it, um, steel door over there, you know, so not the ideal conditions for tuning an antenna. Um, obviously you'd want to do it outside and up in the air, uh, but uh, I was just experimenting with it, so I trimmed it down to where it was resonant so I could do my whisper testing. Um, also being here in the house with the computers and monitors and that, the, the VNA picked up a little noise on it as you'll see in the plot here. So let's go look at that. So here is the plot. Let me do something real quick here. Okay. And uh, this right here is the point of 50 ohm resonance, which is just a little bit below the lowest SWR, but you know, it's neither here nor there. Um, at the point of lowest SWR, uh, we were at a little bit above 50 ohms, but you know, it's you know, about what you'd expect to see. I mean, it's, it's, it's a dipole. But you can see we've got a nice SWR curve here that uh, drops down. I think the lowest point I got um, was around 1.621 SWR. And again, uh, it's inside the house. There's metal stuff next to it and around it, so I wouldn't expect the best. And this little jaggedness that you're seeing here, that's noise uh, being picked up from the computers and things that are sitting around it here in the house. So that's why it looks that way. But um, we got a good plot. Uh, the SWR up at the uh, uh, top end of the band, I think was around uh, uh, 1.8 or so. And the same thing at the bottom of the band. And it was about 1.6 at the middle. So that's fine, you know, fine for operating. Uh, so I went ahead and did some whisper transmissions. And uh, the first transmission, uh, I got across the pond. Now that's with half a watt on whisper um, on 20 meters and the antenna sitting here in the house. So I had the Yezu sitting there at its lowest power, 500 milliwatts, and uh, boom, they picked me up up there in uh, uh, Scotland and over in, over in Paris, over in France. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And after about a half an hour and a few more transmissions, I went to the uh, PSK Reporter, not PSK Reporter, or Whisper APRS Spots. I forget which site this was. I think it's PSK Reporter. Um, and uh, I had a few more hits. Um, this one way over here is, is neat. That's, I forgot to look up what station that is, but that's over there beyond uh, Italy and Germany. 
So uh, we really we really got some distance. And you can see the gray line um, here. So uh, yeah, that was right at the, the tail end of a, a little bit of a solar storm we had today too. So I don't know if that helped propagation or not. But uh, we got up there into Scotland, we got to Paris and wherever this was, way over here. So that's pretty good. And down here, I think that was Laredo, Texas, or it's right down there at the southernmost tip of Texas. And out here into the uh, west, and uh, down there into Florida. So, you know, it, it got out pretty good for being inside the house. The antenna should work fine. Um, when the weather gets better, uh, I'll put it up outside, obviously, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll put it to use. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you, I took a photo of it nice close-up photo here. Let me see if I can find that for you. I think it's this one. Yeah, here we go. So there's a nice close-up photo. Um, there's some things I could do to dress it up. You know, I mean, I'd want to uh, probably put a uh, zip tie there and, uh, and here, you know, just to lock that in. But it was fine for testing and you can see the one-to-one -one there and I've got my solder connections. Now obviously this is not a weatherproof um, uh, installation. If I was going to make something to put it up permanently, uh, at the least you could probably just dope this whole area here with uh, with uh, silicone rubber and uh, seal it up that way to keep the elements out and then uh, the connector itself down here, um, same deal, you could just dope that with silicone rubber to keep the moisture out and uh, that would probably work. Uh, I could also redesign it with a, a cap that would go over the top of it and then uh, seal that, you know. There's there's all kinds of things you could do. It was just a quick and dirty uh, dipole center. These holes down here are for a zip tie where you could put a zip tie through there to take the strain off of the connector if you were hanging this up in the air. Um, and uh, it would uh, it'd be fine. This plastic uh, holds up pretty well outside. I have made accessory parts for a friend's motorcycle that he still has on it after several years, and they were printed in black. Uh, and I saw him after it had been uh, after it been on his bike for four and a half years, you know, out in the sun and and in the elements and everything, and they still looked fine. So this PLA plastic it holds up pretty well. Uh, it would be kind of interesting to put this up as a more permanent installation and leave it up for a few years. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to keep the house for... <laughs> I'm, I'm going month to month still. Uh, the last three years I've been going month to month. So uh, anything I put up outside is going to be what I would call a semi-permanent installation. <laughs> because I'll have to be able to take things down if I uh, suddenly find one month that I'm going to be losing the place. But anyway, um, that was my uh, my custom 3D printed dipole center experiment. You could see uh, it was very easy to knock it up in Tinkercad and uh, 3D print it and throw it together and I've got a dipole. So there you go, 3D printing. Uh, if you, if you want to make something a certain way, you can just make it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.